<laughs> but look, let's go into it. Let's go into it. Let's talk about the offense. Let's talk about our offense. Obviously, we know this was Sam's debut. Or not his debut. He played on at the end of last year, but his first opening day, mm-hmm. you know, game in Washington. All the hype. Uh, completed 19 passes for just over 200 yards. Had the passing touchdown and the rushing touchdown. Also had that interception on the tip pass by who? Zayvon Collins. Who was the one who said, let's draft Zayvon Collins two years ago? <laughs> oh, my God. Will, when I saw it with him, I was like, are you uh-huh. serious, dude? Are you serious? It's like, get out of here. Zayvon, just not doing nothing. Oh. Right, right. <laughs> but, so like you said, that doesn't show much. I think the biggest issue for me um, was the running game. We only had we had under 100 yards rushing total as a team, and I mean that was really just led by Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson had like 59 yards, yeah. and the rest of the team, nobody else outside of Sam Howe had double digit rushing yards in the game. Right. You know what I mean? That 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 frustrated me. So talk to me about what you thought about the offense in this game, positives and uh, of negatives. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's go negative. The negatives list is probably going to be a lot longer than the positive. I can tell you oh, yeah. that. You know, oh, yeah. you talk about the rushing game, and, and yeah, I mean, Brian Robinson had almost 60 yards rushing, but he had 3.1 yards per carry. Right. And he right. had the most of everybody. Yeah. Gibson had three yards per carry, and even Rodriguez, 2.3 yards per carry. That ain't getting it done, folks. Mm-hmm. Whether it's whether it's picking the wrong holes or whether it's the, the line – not blocking, whatever the combination is, like that was not good. And that's not helping your rookie quarterback out either. Right. You know, so right. so that was a concern. Um, we, we talked about Sam Howell going 19 of 31. I felt we we were not balanced on offense. He threw 25 right. passes in the first half and 34 overall. Like we right. clamped down in the second half almost because I don't know if it was partly because he was a little loose with the football at times. Um, and so we said, hey, whoa, whoa, this is going to be a close game. We don't need to lose this by by getting Rex Grossman uh, happy here. Um, but but there was a, there was not a balance out there uh, with with how I think 25 passes in a half in the first half is too much. It's one thing if it's in the second half and you've made adjustments or are coming back. But so I didn't like. Those two things. So, like you mentioned, the running game wasn't helping him, and I also I did not think the the play selection was helping him. Yeah, no, and and as I talked about this off season during the preseason, where it back it backfired on me, and maybe that was the act that was the reason. But another game goes by. This now a regular season game where we don't even target Terry McLaurin until the second quarter. Now, maybe that had something to do with the toe injury. I mean, he was still out there, so I assumed. He's at least close to 100%. And when he got that ball on, on his first catch in the second quarter, he got it, got I think like 13, 14 yards. Um, but still, at the end of the day, only had two receptions. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we paid this man this money. We're telling him he, he's our leader, but we're not. I mean, force feed him the daggone ball. I think that's one of the reasons why our fans love Taylor Heineke so much. Heineke, we know, F it. He's up there. He's out there somewhere. He's going to find him. And I don't feel like whether it's Fitz for the little time he was here, whether it's Carson, whether it's, you know, um, or Sam right now, we're not locating Terry. You know what I mean? And, and maybe I got to go back and look at the tape. Maybe he's being bracketed. Maybe he's being double teamed and things like that. But with the amount of crossing routes that we do, Terry could get open. Even on that touchdown, if I'm not mistaken, Terry's crossing and the defender moves over, which prompts Sam to then run the other way, which and hit Brian Robson in the end zone. But if if Sam sets there for a little bit longer, that route is open on like the like the one he hit it uh, against Dallas last year. Um, so we gotta get them, we gotta get Terry the ball. Like that's that's I feel like that, that's elementary. That's something we should be doing. He is our our guy, and just to have two receptions in the ball game is unacceptable. Now, with that being said. We had, uh, what, Curtis Samuel, he came out, did his thing. Jahan, both of them got, I believe, five receptions. But the guy that I was bashing this offseason, the man that I said that we should potentially trade, came out and showed why we need him. He's a third down threat, a big body. Shout out to Logan Thomas getting his four receptions for over 40 yards. Hey, this is what we want from him. He seems to be sure-handed. He's a great blocker, the size. And there is that little piece that shows 
he can play quarterback, and he's played quarterback in the league before. So he can be a gadget guy for us. I just right. want him on the field. Right. That's huge. You know, right. but but our passing game needs to open it up a little bit, Will. Well, and I'm going to push back a little bit on, on force feeding Terry the ball. And I'm going to go back to kind of what I've talked about all training camp when there's all this you know, hype about, um, you know, Cole Turner and An- Antonio Gibson getting, being part of the passing game. It's like there's only one ball to go around. Yep. There's only so many touches in a game. And, you know, and like you said, you know, Curtis Samuel was our leader receiver, five catches, 54 yards. Jahan Dotson had another five catches for 40 yards. Logan Thomas had four catches and he was targeted several more times. He is clearly yeah. going to be part of this offensive game plan. Yeah. So was like you said, is if it was, was Terry being a little bit of a decoy, was he being bracketed and these guys were, he was helping these guys get open, but we've got weapons. And so I think the ball is going to spread around. Also why I tried to stay away from commanders players in fantasy. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what in any given Sunday, who's going to be the, the hot, hot receiver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I will say at least so Terry only had two catches, but he had an impact on the game because mm. remember he had that big 30 yard pass interference yeah. play, oh, yeah. you know, as really, well. Yeah. So, I mean, that move that that first drive that we scored a field goal on, we had over 60 yards of penalties mm. by Arizona to get us there. So he did still have an an uh, an impact on the game, but I, I do agree with you where, where I would like to see him involved even more. I mean, I'm, I don't have a problem if, like you said, we, he gets his eight to 10 targets a game. I'm yeah. good with that. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, and I will talk to me about this line. Cause what you, you just mentioned something that I thought was more kind of damning of the whole situation of our offense is that that first drive, we didn't drive. It wasn't without help. I mean, they there was like three or four penalties back to back that really took us down the field. I believe at one point on that drive, it was like 60 yards worth of penalties that were able to get us down the field to score. It and it wasn't like, I mean, that kind of hid some of the offensive issues and some of that stuff because once we were able to get down there, we were able to, you know, we got the touchdown. But we'll talk about that because once we didn't have those penalties to rely on, they were getting pressure. They were getting penetration left and right. We were making no-name guys, or at least guys that I hadn't heard of, Gadek, Gadecki, or whatever that guy. That, yes, yes. Like I don't know who these guys are, but they were balling out for you know what I mean. So what is going on with our O line, man? Because we need protection. Well, you know, so this is the challenge, and this is where I hate playing rookie head coaches in Week One. Because we don't know what they're bringing on, how they're changing the current roster, what their schemes are. And Jonathan Gannon got named head coach because of something. Mm -hmm. Because what he did in Philadelphia with the defensive side of the ball. So you know this guy has some talent. And, and, you know, but we didn't know how was he going to change things around. And, you know, they, they talked a little bit about. Their their blitzes came from all over the place. They would, yeah. you know, they would not just rush their four down linemen. They were, you know, they were doing a lot of stunts. They were disguising where the where the rushes were coming from. But most importantly, they were rushing four guys, and we have five offensive linemen. Yep. So that's a concern. That's a that's yeah. a major concern. Uh we really our offensive line allowed that D to look good. Way better than it should be. Now, we could, you know, come week 17, we may look back and say, wow, that Arizona defense of players who I don't know and who they either traded or allowed to leave, they let, you know, their second round pick from a couple of years ago, Murphy, go to Minnesota. You know, so you kind of, they kind of purged the roster. They yeah. could turn Simmons out to be, and, yeah, they, and then just traded, you know, Isaiah Simmons. So maybe they know what they're doing and they could be a lot better, you know, by the end of the season looking back. But right now, like you said, we let some dude named, guard deck get two yeah. sacks on us yeah you know it's like I mean, we allowed them to look like all pros out there with you know and and this happened a couple of years ago with brandon staley and the chargers you know yep. where it's yep. like so that was really disappointing to see the offensive lines performance and that has been our concern all year long is did we do enough um for week one the answer is no Mm-mm. we did not we did not so, and look, at the end of the day, before we go to defense, let's talk about him. we got to talk about my guy, Sam Howell. And, Will, I'm going to start, obviously. It, honestly, I, I found myself getting very frustrated at home watching him because it was kind of like 
he shows you all this stuff in camp. He shows you all this stuff in the preseason games, and you're just like, okay, he's got it. He's with it. He's boom, boom. And then it's like he came out today, and it was like the lights were too bright. I mean, not today, but Sunday. It's like the lights were almost too bright for him for a while. Mm-hmm. Like he just seemed like he was moving a step slower than everybody else. And it was kind of like you you kind of like urging, like, you know, this is my guy. This is the guy I've watched. It was kind of like you watching your kid, like, come on, we practiced this. You know, you got this. Like, what are you doing? I mean, he wasn't hitting check downs. He was holding the ball. He would have times when the pressure would come up and he'd move up in the pocket and there'd be an open lane to run and he'd just sit there and he would stay. And then all of a sudden they'd catch him from behind. And it's like, these are things that you've been doing, buddy. What, what is happening? So obviously then the, you have the big fumble where, you know, Gadecki scores a touchdown and everything. And you see Sam, he looks defeated and everything. That is the moment when you find out the character of your quarterback. And what I saw from him after that impressed me. And I've, I, you know how impressed I already am with this guy. But that type of resiliency where he came back on the field, almost with that like a cornerback, a DB's mentality, like the last plays erased, can't do anything about it, move on to the next play. And to see him drive us down the field, and some of these passes just crisp, boom, bullet, boom, just hitting, hitting receivers down the field, getting to the one where he hits um, – Robinson and it gets us down to like the four or it was like the six or seven right before halftime. And then we ended up kicking the field goal. We don't, we wouldn't normally get that no. last year. We no. wouldn't have got, we would have had a couple plays and then we would have had some conversations about time management and okay, let's go into the halftime and wait for the next second half. He gave us an opportunity so much so that with eight seconds left, we got out of bounds. I was sitting there like, well, let's take a shot. And I think they, they ran a play. Uh, to the right, to the right. They yeah. try, yeah. They they yeah. have the field, yeah, yeah. So and then obviously they ended up kicking the field goal, but that was huge because mm-hmm. that gave the team confidence going into the halftime. Everybody talks about the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half and how important that are in the whole dynamic of the game. Him doing that and then coming out and and kind of doing what we did when we we're by, down sixteen to ten. I loved that. He showed me resiliency. Still had a lot to work on. Still need he I does not look 100 percent comfortable in my opinion. And I, I just feel like hey, just get get with who you're gonna get with. If it's gonna be tight ends, if it's gonna be Jahan, get to him and let's get this thing moving. Now he needs to run a game to help, but what were your thoughts on him? He looked like a rookie quarterback. This is yeah. why we call him a rookie quarterback. You know, yeah. he he was making his second start. It wasn't week 17 when one of the didn't the opponent has the playoffs ahead of them. You know, um, and so he it was the epitome of what JP Finley has said all during training camp with, with Sam Howell. And he's his I'm gonna kind of butcher his quote, but what he says is um, you know, when he's got it going, he's great. Yep, but when he's not, it's rough. Yep. And we saw both of that on Sunday. There yep. were moments when he was hitting his receivers in stride with arm strength and throwing the ball 15 yards in the air to move the chains. And it was beautiful. The throw he, you know, to Terry that we got the offense or defensive pass interference on was aggressive and it was, you know, going after it. And right. that's what we liked. Right. There were and those two touchdowns that we had are because of Sam Howell. The yep. first one when he rolled out to his left and then threw back his kind of sidearm like a shortstop. Showed his athleticism for a touchdown. That was huge. Yeah, it was extremely impressive. Impressive play. And then the scrambling ability when he said, "All right," I mean, he ran from the ten yard line in and said, "I can get this." And you know, because as he starts running to the left, I'm like, "There's nothing there. There's nothing there." And then he took off, and oh, okay, there's something there. That's what's there. You know, you (laughs) running is what's there. So that was the real good out there, and he showed some great moments out there. You know, the talent that he's got. But he was loose with the ball. Mm-hmm. I don't. I'm not too concerned about the the tipped interception, yeah. unless it's a situation of could he have seen that to avoid it because he's shorter. So right. you know that right. that could happen. However, the other there were other p- non picks out there that I, I, that has me a little bit more concerned. You know, there was yeah. one where he hit the he hit the DB in the on the side of the head. All he had to do was turn his head, and the ball was right yeah. in his bread basket. Yeah. 
you know, he had another throw where the DB was a half a step late from catching it. And it was a pick six for, I think it was Kayvon Wallace. So there was some loose throws out there that, that were concerning, but to me, the bigger thing was, was the pocket presence, as you've mentioned. And, and it, it's a combination of him holding the ball, which that is what they talked about at North Carolina. He did. He has a habit of keeping his head downfield, which is a good thing, but also, you know, he wants to make the big play out there. So his pocket presence, his his internal clock was was not really going very well. But then it also he wasn't helped by the offensive line. And he, he I don't think he was helped by the play calling to help him. If we're all struggling there, let's do something different than what we were doing. That didn't happen. So it was a lot of ups and downs from him, which we yeah. know we're going to get. But his highs are very, very high. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and look, at the end of the day, it's just like you, you alluded to earlier. The head coach for the Cardinals was the D.C. for the Eagles in the Super Bowl. They went up against that Philly offense. They He knows EB's play calling. So there was that familiarity right there. And at the end of the day, we talked about the line, the lack of rushing. But this is still a new offense for these guys. You know what I mean? These guys aren't – Sam isn't super familiar with it. They're just picking it up on the fly. Being with that and being the first week, this is to be expected. In my opinion, I mean, Sam showed us bright spots, showed us a lot to work on. Um, we got out of it with the W, and we're going to learn, learn at least early. We're going to have to rely heavy on our defense, you know. And uh -huh. what else is new? What right. else is new? Dun, 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 Let's go. <laughs> the Washington Commanders. There it is.